I'm Gavin with Hellhound Leather, and now we're going to show you some tips and tricks on basket weaving. Um, this is the way I do it. Other people do it however they want to do it, and that's fine too. Uh, first, we start off with a stitch line at whatever depth you prefer. Just run that all the way around the outside edge. I take my shader tool and decide how close to the stitch line we want it. Just make a soft impression. Take my divider tool and make a very light score mark right at the bottom where I want all of my shaders to end. Then we go back and make another line just inside the top edge of my shell tool. And that way we'll know exactly where to stop stamping with the basket weave tool. Can we do one more line on the back of the holster? And end up with very light score lines. The other thing we need to do is decide the angle of the basket weave. I'm just going to run from corner to corner. Make another line. And that's the line we'll be starting our basket weave stamp. When you first start out, regardless of which side you start on, you want to run your edge just along the line that you just scored. And the second mark is going to be on the other side of that. And so you'll still follow the line just on the other side. Now it's incredibly important when you're doing basket weave to get the end of your tool all the way back into this impression here. A lot of the time you'll set it and kind of push it and it feels like it's all the way back, but it's not. So you just need to make sure that that's slid back all the way. And between one stamp and the next, it's not gonna to make too much of a difference. But between the next 50 stamps, it's gonna create quite a different gap. So make sure it's all the way back to the line where it's supposed to be, following your guideline here. And this first line is the line that dictates how the rest of your pattern is gonna go. And so getting this straight and tight is the most crucial part. And again, we put that on there, make sure it's pushed all the way back to these lines here, and following your center line. Now, when you get to the other side, you have your line here that you marked for the top of your shader, and you don't want to go too far past that. So here, you have a little bit farther to go. Line that up, push it back, and you can see here my tool goes over the end. And so you want to tip that backwards away from your line, and give it a couple taps, so that as it runs into your line, it kind of disappears. And then after your center line is straight and tight, you turn it to the side and everything else fits right in line. So now, from here on out, everything is pretty easy. And when you line these up, just tip your tool backwards and you'll be able to tell the line of your handle follows line of the stamp straight out. And when you get to this point you've run out of stamping going in this direction. So you just want to stop it there and move back down and continue on where you have a definite line and then we'll fix that in a little while.
And when you get up close to that line, just make sure that you're not going over that line that you set for your shader tool. Right here, we're getting kind of close. And it's going to just bump up right against that, and that'll be all right. And here, we're gonna have an overlap. So we want to tip it away from our line and tap it. But we also have some here that doesn't cross that line. So we'll tip it backwards and give it another little tap. So now, as it crosses that line, it turns into a little shadow. And now we have run out of lines to follow here. And so we've got this big edge with all this space to fill. What we're going to do is come down here towards the end where we're going to run across our line and just come right next to this. Now you can see here, we obviously don't want to put a stamp right here. We want our stamp to be out one space farther. What we want to do is set that in the space, line up all of these, and then just give it a little press so that we know exactly where to put our stamping tool. So that little tap turns into a ghost across the line, and now we have a place to put our stamp for the rest of the holster. And then the same rules apply. Coming down every other line, we're just going to make a little impression where we want our line to be, and that helps line up along with the axis here. Now when we're running down towards the back, we're also going to keep in mind that we put our line along the back edge of the holster. It's gonna bend here in the middle, and so we go across the front a little ways and just stop at this line as we come down. Again, we run out of steps, and we just follow the same procedure as before to fill in all the rest of the space. And always remember that your big fat hands hide everything behind them. And so once you start coming up around this line, a lot of time it's easy just to run straight into that and not realize you've screwed up your whole thing until after you're done. Not that I've ever messed up anything in my whole life. And there's that portion. I move on to the shader tool, just using a craft tool shell, like everybody has for the last, what, 5,000 years. And I always start my tools in the corner, because it's easier to run out of space in the end than it is at the, at the middle. So we just follow our line that we scored before. And you can freehand this, but if you have a little line, it just goes a lot faster. A lot of people do it a lot of different ways. You can put them next to each other, you can space them out, so it's every other space. You can do it one every five inches if you feel like it. I prefer to start mine in the corner of the last one. Get a tappy tappy. I feel like it just fills in the space more.
When you get up in these tight little areas, some people prefer to just leave it plain. Some people switch to a smaller shell stamp. And I just prefer to tip my shader towards the outside of the holster just a little bit. Need a little half impression. And we spin it around, do the same thing on the other side. And then as the space opens up, you lean the tool a little bit farther forward. And we end up meeting in the middle of this nice little ridge line. We just continue following all the way around the stitch line. Now one thing I didn't mention before is that any kind of stamping will stretch your leather. Um, this is a good 10 ounce saddle skirt, so it doesn't stretch too much, but it still stretches. Um, if you use anything thinner, it'll stretch more. Depending on the shape of your pattern, it could stretch it out in weird ways. Um, a lot of people like to put packing tape or masking tape or frog tape on the back. Um, some people use the shelf sticker paper. Um, and if you do that before you start tooling, it will hold your leather in place and won't allow it to stretch quite as much. Um, other than that, there's nothing more to it.